In a previous video, I talked about how you can use Samsung Dex to do many of the same tasks that you can do on a desktop. I also spoke about how developers can use a Linux install on Dex to do your coding right on your Samsung device. This video will elaborate on using Linux on Dex to set up a development environment for coders. The environment I will create will consist of coding in C Sharp and Python, and I will also be connecting to a SQL Server database through code and a database admin tool. Now let's begin. So here I am on the Dex desktop. At the top, I have the Linux on Dex app that will allow us to run the Linux container. Let's open it up and let's click on the Run button to begin. So when you run Linux, you are presented an Ubuntu desktop with a terminal and an Explorer window. You also have some icons of the default apps to your left. Let's get on to setting up Python. I'm going to set it up using Visual Studio Code, which is installed by default. I'll open up Visual Studio Code. Now, I need to install the Python extension for Visual Studio Code. To do this, you have to click on View, Extensions, and in the search box, type Python. There are several Python results. The one we want is the one displaying Microsoft as the publisher. Let's install that one. When it's finished installing, click on Reload. Now, before I create a Python project, I'm going to install the pip package manager and also create folders where I will store the project. Let me close Visual Studio Code first. I'll go to the terminal window and first do an apt-get update. After the update, I'll type the command to install pip. After it's installed, I'll also install pip for Python version 3. Now, I'll create the folders where I will store my Python projects. After creating the folders, I'll open up Visual Studio Code again and open the Hello World folder I created. I also want to make sure that Visual Studio Code is pointing to a Python interpreter. To do this, type Control Shift P to bring up the search box and type Python Select Interpreter. And I'm going to use the Python version 3 interpreter. Now I'll create a Python file called hello world.py. After creating the file, this pop up appears asking me if I want to install the PyLint code analysis tool. I'll go ahead and install it. I'm also getting this warning about the integrated terminal running slow. I'll click yes so it uses a faster terminal instead. Now I'm ready to write some code, so I'll type out a quick hello world program. I'm done, and to run it, I right click on anywhere in the code area and click on Run Python File in Terminal. As you can see, at the bottom of the terminal, a Hello World message is appearing. Now let me modify the code so it spits out the Hello World message 100 times. I'll run it again, so pay attention to the bottom terminal window. Now you can see the Hello World message typed out 100 times. We're done with Python, so now let's set up a C Sharp environment. For C Sharp development, I'm going to install MonoDevelop. I'm not using Visual Studio Code because I wasn't able to get the Microsoft.NET framework working. There seems to be some issues with running it on ARM64 processors, but MonoDevelop has its own version built in. To install MonoDevelop, all I have to do is type sudo apt-get install MonoDevelop in a terminal window. After the installation is done, a new icon will appear in the programming folder, so I'll run Mono Develop now. I'll create the project and folder where I'll be saving it to. When creating the project, 
I already get a simple hello world application without writing any code. Now let's run this. And a console window with the code's output appears. And you can see it says hello world. So we set up a Python and C Sharp environment. Now let's install a database admin tool so we can administer databases. To access my database servers, I will install the Squirrel SQL database admin tool. I do this by visiting the Squirrel SQL website and downloading the installer. On the website, I'll click on Download Squirrel SQL Client. Then I'll click on Install Jars of Latest Snapshot. Click on the topmost folder. Then click on the topmost link and wait for the download to finish. After the download is done, I'll go to the terminal window and navigate to the download folder. Now I type java-jar and the name of the downloaded file. You can just copy and paste the file name like I did here. The Squirrel SQL installation will now begin. I'll select the location where I want to install it and also set up other options. And the installation begins. Now that the installation is complete, I now have to install the SQL Server drivers and set up the connections to the database. I'll do this behind the scenes and then show you my connection. So now that I've finished installing the drivers and setting up the SQL Server connection, I'll open up Squirrel SQL and connect to my database. Here's the connection I created called Lutec. I'll double click it and then click on connect. The connection is successful. So I'll refresh it so I can open up my tables. I only have one table here called Guitars to demonstrate this. I'll open it and also maximize the application. Now let me run a quick SQL query. Here, I just basically open up the Guitars table again, but this time using SQL code. So that's a typical database connection. Now I'll show you a C-sharp project I created that connects to the database and displays this table. So I'll open up Model Develop again and open the database project. This is a small project that reads and displays the database table I showed earlier. I'll run it and you can see the same entries I have in the table showing up here. To further test this code, I'm going back to Squirrel SQL to add another entry to the table. I'm opening up the application. Here we have the table data and I will now click on the SQL tab to create a new entry using SQL code. You can see the status text below shows that a new row was inserted. Let's go back to the table and see. But we'll first need to refresh the table. and it shows up. Now I'll rerun the C-sharp project and see if it also shows up there. And it also shows up. So that was my quick demonstration of setting up a coding environment with Linux on DeX. Now I'm going to show you how you can still use Linux on DeX without the need to plug into an external display. You are only limited to using the terminal but the Linux terminal is a very powerful tool. Here, I'm using my phone normally without logging into DeX. So to start, just open up the Linux on DeX app and select the container you created. Mine is called Development. Now, instead of tapping the Run button, I'll just tap on the terminal icon. And now you can use the terminal to control your Linux environment. Let me demonstrate a couple of things. First, I'm going to install the HTOP Task Manager. It's installed. Now let me run it. Here, I can see and manage all my running tasks. No GUI required. Now, I'm going to run the Hello World Python script I created using Visual Studio Code. So I'll navigate to the folder where it's located. I'll open up the script first to show you that you could still be able to edit it. Here's the code. 
Now let me exit. And to run it, I will type python space hello world dot pi. And it's running. Now I'll exit out of Linux just by typing exit. So there you have it. How to actually do development on a phone. I really look forward to how Samsung will further improve the experience. The major issue I have with Linux on DeX is the available software packages. Since the Galaxy S10 uses an ARM processor, you will find that some of the applications you use don't have an ARM version available. Some applications that I like to use, like JetBrains DataGrip and TeamViewer, are not available for ARM processors, and there is no source code available for them so I could compile my own. With more ARM computers being available for sale and Chromebooks now supporting Linux applications, I'm hopeful developers will start to keep ARM systems in mind. So that's Linux on Dex. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.